going on everybody? Yes, it's your boy Mood616 here and I'm back with my December-January haul. This is going to be everything I picked up um, basically from the Black Friday sale, which I got that package from Vinegar Syndrome just before Christmas, Christmas haul, and then what I picked up in um, January and stuff. So I didn't really pick up a lot of stuff for myself in December, but overall this update is pretty damn big because my Black Friday haul was rather huge. And um, yeah, I did pretty well for Christmas too. Wife hooked me up. So yeah, so it's going to be all the DVDs, Blu-rays, and of course, uh, 4K. So what I'll do as usual, it'll be broken down into companies as usual. I'll start off with the DVDs. We'll get into some um, niche uh, horror stuff, uh, some Vinegar Syndrome, AFCA stuff. And then we'll do, I got like a huge stack of uh, action. And then we'll end with the 4Ks. So yeah, without further ado. Let's do this. Um, not very many DVDs as usual. Actually, only two DVDs and one DVD box set, but I'll get to why I have that box set. Uh, first up is a documentary called Direct to Video. Uh, I think it's the same dudes, the, yeah, the same guys that did uh, Penny Pinchers, which was really cool too. And I think it's the same company that released all those VHS um, documentaries, like three volumes and two, which I actually need to watch those. I haven't checked them out yet, but I really enjoyed Penny Pinchers. That was based on... Um, you know, basically guys are doing micro budget shot on video films and stuff, but this one's really cool. Direct to video. This one is all about straight to video horror of the nineties. So it's kind of cool. Cause it talks about like trauma and full moon and, you know, Fred Olin Ray's films. And it just, it has a lot of really cool stuff. It's very nostalgic watching this documentary with all the clips and stuff. Of course, I'm very familiar with pretty much all the movies and stuff, but if you're into like direct, you know, to video type stuff, especially from the nineties, this is pretty cool, man. It's pretty interesting. I, I think my biggest gripe with this thing is that I I wish it had been longer. You know, it's only a 106 minutes. I always like my documentaries to be really long because I feel like there was a lot more that could have been explored here. Of course, most of the stuff that they talk about is from pretty much the early 90s, like 1990 up until about the mid 90s, or about to the, about the Scream era. They don't really talk about too much stuff after that because that's when things kind of got back into bigger budget and stuff. And of course, there still was direct to video. But anyways, I digress. I wish it was just a little bit longer. Some of the interviews would have been cool to kind of extend and stuff like that. But anyways, I enjoyed it, man. Direct to video. Straight to video from the 90s. Pretty cool stuff. Um, of course, I picked this one up around Christmas. Bloody Silent Night, Bloody Night. Uh, this is just like a side grade. I have like one of those shitty alpha DVDs. And of course, probably on other um, public domain box sets and shit like that too. But I've heard that this transfer is pretty good. The film chess one. I actually ended up getting this after Christmas. I ordered this like... I want to say around the beginning of November and I got it in January. Like the postal system was a fucking mess. It still is a mess right now with deliveries and, you know, lost packages. And between November and December, I had 31 lost packages. Never received one of one thing. It's so crazy. So crazy. It's all sorted out. Um, got some of that stuff, got refunded on some of that shit. But anyways, just crazy. But anyways, this one showed up and it, it was kind of crazy. It took like two months, but... It just it just randomly showed up one day, but um, of course I didn't watch it in in uh, January. Ooh, I just got something in my eye. That was nice. Eyelash right in the eyeball. Um, but anyways, yeah, I did watch my other copy during during Christmas because I didn't watch it in a couple years. But you know, it is what it is. So get into this last of the DVDs DVD box set here. Um, so basically, what happened here, and this has happened to me twice. If you guys remember my last update, I had ordered a Blu-ray and received the DVD from Amazon. I've been a Prime member since I think two thousand eight or nine. I've only ever had this happen to me like a handful of times and it's ha this is the second time in the last two months this has happened to me where I've ordered something on Blu-ray and received the DVDs and it's totally just an error because they show the picture of the Blu-rays, It's pri or it says Blu-ray, everything, kind of prices DVDs though but but anyways, so I ordered the film noir classic um, side of cinema volume one, there's four sets of these, the other three are very easily readily available to get. But knowing that this particular Blu-ray box that was out of print, Amazon.c had it listed, you know, for a really good price. And I was like, holy shit, that's a Blu-ray set. So I quickly nabbed it up. Of course it came and it was the DVD set. And I'm like, fuck. So I was kind of disappointed because I knew right then I was probably going to be stuck with this because that set is totally unavailable. Out of print, sorry, I'm burping. And I was like, fuck it. I paid like 24 bucks for this. I was like, it was kind of priced like a DVD box set. I thought I was getting a really good deal. It is what it is. But I'm just happy to have the films anyways, because I know, like I said, this the Blu-ray set's out of print. So <clears throat> so basically what we got in here is Witness to Murder with Barbara Stanwyck. 
I haven't seen actually any of these movies. I've been really getting into these. This one's actually got John Garfield and Shelley Winters in it. He ran all the way. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Storm Fear. Uh, that's pretty cool. And of course, a bullet for, and of course, right? Like we all are super, I, I, I'm just, I'm such a newbie when it comes to film noir. I'm just getting into these. So if you guys have seen any of these, let me know. Um, and a bullet for Joey uh, with Edward G. Robinson and George Raft. So that's pretty cool. I recognize a lot of the people in these movies. I just haven't seen, I've seen a lot of film noirs, like a lot of the classic ones, but you know, stuff like this, I'm really getting into. So, but uh but yeah, so that's it for the DVDs. Um, yeah, I would have rather have gotten the Blu-ray set, but it is what it is. What, what am I going to do? It's my bad for not being into it before. Moving on to the Blu-rays. A little bit of standard stuff indie. And we got Hanukkah, the Jewish slasher film starring... This is crazy, man. Charles Fleischer's in this movie. PJ Souls, Robert uh, Fleischer Jr., Caroline Williams, Dick Williams, and Sid Haig. And music from Harry Manfredini. I'm like, holy shit, man, this is crazy. Of course, this is like the last um, things that uh, Dick Miller and I think Sid Haig was actually in or shot or something like that before they passed away. So rest in peace to those cats. But uh, I haven't really heard many people actually talk about this. I, I, I heard some people say that they got their copies and the ADR was off, like the audio was completely out of sync and shit. It was just a pressing error, I think. So hopefully mine's not like that. I might actually check this out to see if my disc is fucked up because I was going to wait till next Christmas and I got thinking about this What? just before I was going to do the update. And I was like, man, I should probably check my disc. Maybe I can get a replacement or something like that. So, um, but uh, yeah, cause I know my, my homeboy, Matt uh, from Union Horror Movies had a copy and he had to get a replacement disc or something like that, or maybe still waiting for it. So I don't know, hopefully mine's not messed up, but uh, sounds interesting. Cool cast, you know, it's going to have decent music and stuff. So, but Hanukkah, Jewish slasher film. <laughs> I love it. It's amazing. Uh, finally got around to picking up Zodiac. The two disc directors. I haven't seen this movie in a long time, man. Um, I really like it. I think David Fincher is such a great director, but th this is cool, man. It, it's. I was always disappointed, you know, when you when you watch these, you know, based on true uh, stories, you know, they, you know, the Zodiac killer was a real serial killer. You always know how it's going to end because he was never caught. <laughs> you know, it's always a problem I have with these type of movies, but it's still a great movie. It really, really is a great movie. So just finally got around to grabbing it. Blu-ray was super cheap. So speaking of cheap Blu-rays, Finally grabbed the Child's Play remake. And I'm actually a fan of this. Now, I know a lot of people don't really care for this and shit. Um, I, do have, I do have minor problems with it. I think the gore is really good in this. And I think some of the casting is really good. Um, Audrey Plaza, who plays um, the mother in this, she's fantastic. She's so damn beautiful and sexy. She's just a great screen presence. Um, she was in Black Bear last year, and I fucking love that movie. Anyways, um... But my biggest problem is, is like the Andy character. Um, he's so, he sucks, man. The kid actor in this is, he's so stony. Like he's just so wooden and shit. I don't know. There's something about his acting. that's just so bad, but I generally don't really like to critique acting in, in these type of movies and stuff like that. But I just, I noticed it in this one and it was just bugging me because everyone else was pretty decent, but overall pretty cool Gordon. I do like how they set it up with, you know, um, bringing this child's or this Chucky to life. You know, it was kind of cool. It was different. So I enjoyed it. So, last month, this was the one that I was talking about that I had ordered the um, the Blu-ray and got the DVD. And I still have the DVD, actually, because I actually um, found the Blu-ray at Sunrise Records for, I think it was the same price I paid for the DVD on Amazon, which was listed as the Blu-ray. And I actually found out from a couple guys on Instagram, the same thing happened to them Canadian fellows also. So, it wasn't just me that got fucked on that uh, buying the Blu-ray and getting the DVD thing. Anyways, so I went to go send back the, the DVD to Amazon because I'm honest, like, well, I'm not honest. I just didn't need the fucking DVD. And they said, just keep it. I was like, what the? And they refunded me. I was like, that's the weirdest shit ever. I don't know why they refunded me without having to send it back, but whatever. I got a free DVD out of it. So still sealed. Um, but Orgy of the Living Dead, uh, Paul Nashy film. Paul, it's such a weird role for Paul Nashy in this film. Uh, it's also known as, um, of course, uh, The Hanging Woman, which I actually do have that DVD, the trauma version, the trauma edition of it and stuff. Um, or You Living Dead. Like, Paul Nashi plays this weird kind of hunchback, like, necrophiliac and shit. It's it's such a weird role for him. It's strange because he's not, like, a leading role in this, but it, it's fun, though. It, it's actually a fun movie. I, I enjoy this, though. Transfer's good. I was really impressed with the transfer, actually. Uh, from Film Detective, we've got uh, Giant from the Unknown Deluxe Edition. I started to watch this and I got sidetracked. I was going to be doing a review on this and I never went back to it because I don't remember what happens. I I don't know. But anyways, I should probably do a review for this one. But uh, 
Giant from the Unknown. Transfer looked pretty damn good on this. I was very impressed with this from 1958. And Film Detectives really stepped up their game with their transfers and shit. So, and uh, the menu's like phenomenal. It's crazy. It looks so good. All right, so that's kind of whatever. And then we're going to get into a couple Mono Macabros. Um, I actually ordered these on the Mono Macabro sale date. I ordered this November 1st, received them January 20th. So, long story short, it was like five or six weeks past and I kind of emailed him. I said, yo man, I said, do you have the tracking for the, you know, the shipping and stuff? And then after he, he said to me, he's like, oh, you didn't get the track, blah, blah, blah. He's like, it was a couple back and forth. And he realized that he never actually shipped my package. <laughs> so that's why I got it like two and a half months later for, you know, a couple Mondos, but upgraded the Blood Spattered Bride. Um, of course, the the title and the movie itself was a big inspiration on, on the Kill Bill uh, movie. Zuh. Um, I love this film, man. Great, great gore, man. I just, I love the way this one develops. It's great. It's got a great ending too. Uh, just an upgrade. I have the blue underground DVD. I don't think I ever grabbed the anchor Bay one, but great movie, man. Really, really love this one. Good Spanish film. So yeah, if you've never seen the blood splattered bride, check it out. It's good shit. It's not a, it's not a, um, giallo either. A lot of people think it's a giallo. It's actually not just probably the title, but here's one of the weirdest ones in the whole updates. It's crazy. Um, the Beast and the Magic Sword. This is another film with Paul Nashi. I actually have a lot of Paul Nashi movies in, in this update, I just realized. Uh, the Beast and the Magic Sword. Now, Paul Nashi actually direct. No, he didn't direct this one, but he stars in this one. Directed by Jack No Malan? I don't know. But this is a Spanish-Japanese um, uh, production. And Paul Nashi basically plays... He plays the werewolf character. Like, he plays in a lot of these type of movies and stuff. He plays this damned character who's been cursed with this werewolf curse or whatever anyways so and it's a period piece so it's a werewolf and a period piece in like 10th century and it ends up going to japan so there's like samurais fighting fucking um werewolves and shit in this it's crazy it's like a totally crazy bizarre setup to a film and it oddly enough works it's like it's like a spanish werewolf film meets like almost like a shaw brothers in a sense but but this is Japanese. <laughs> it's like, it's so bizarre, man. Um, I really enjoyed this. I thought this was cool, man. The Beast of Magic Sword. Definitely a weird premise. Uh, another upgrade for me, Who Can Kill a Child. Um, yeah, I do have the uh, the DVD of this also. Reviewed this film a couple times, actually. Big fan of this. Um, killer Kid film, man. It's cool shit, though. you never seen Who Can Kill a Child. What is this? Yeah, it is a Spanish film also, so. Yeah, awesome film. And then last one up here, which my boy, Mr. Parker, um, everybody probably knows Mr. Parker. Um, of course, he's a regular on the 22 Shots. He's actually a host. Um, recommended this one to me. It's a South Korean film from 1978, Woman Chasing the Butterfly of Death. Now, I listened to his review on his, um, on his weekly reviews. It sounded insane. I, I wanted to get this just based on the, the artwork alone. It just, it looked crazy and, and weird and odd and sure as shit, apparently it's it's all those things. It's crazy, it's weird, it's odd. Um, 1978 South Korean film. It's long, it's about two hours long, so looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, okay, so that was the Mondos into some Severins. These were presents from the wife from Christmas. She always hooks a brother up, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Fulci for fake. Yeah, this is just the, this is on the, the non-slip cover one. Um, I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. Um, documentary about, uh, it's kind of like a, I, I, I guess not a mockumentary, but it's a dramatization dr documentary. There's like a little bit of a storyline about this guy that's doing these interviews with, you know, Fulci's kids and stuff like that. And he's supposedly su supposed to be playing Fulci in an upcoming film and stuff. It's kind of an interesting premise to do a documentary. Um, it's pretty. It's it's really interesting to hear Fulci's kids talk about Lucio Fulci, you know, as you know their father, you know, and that that type of person and shit. And he kind of was described as how I thought he would be, you know, very disconnected from his family and just kind of into his work and shit. Like he was a workaholic and stuff. So, but cool stuff, man. Really good insight into this. I enjoyed this. Fulci for fake. And for the people that are probably going to ask, it is subtitled. You do have to read the documentary. Um, Revenge of the Living Dead Girls. Now, this is one, I swear to God, I had no idea. I have never, I don't think I'd ever heard of this unless it was released under a different title and i just never seen it before. I can't remember every single movie I've ever watched, but I don't know. This title is very generic, like Revenge of the Living Dead Girls. It can be, this could relate to so many different type of movies. But I was watching this going, I don't think I've ever seen this film before. And uh, it, it was, it was, 
kind of ridiculous fun. I, I thought the ending was crazy. <laughs> um, it's sleazy. It's it's fun. I think the um, the the Living Dead they look pretty damn cool in this. Um, I enjoyed this. I mean, Transfer is crazy. Revenge of Living Dead girls. Good release from Sever. Uh, another really fun release from Severn is uh, Night Killer. Claudio Fagrasso. Yes, if you're familiar with that name, you probably know it. He's most famous for directing Troll 2, of course, among films. This is like one of those like stereotypical, so bad it's amazing films. Like this is a horrible movie. Like the mask on the killer <laughs> is so fucking bad. It's so like, it's amazing. I absolutely love this movie. It's just so corny and shit. This is a great movie to throw on. With your homeboys, you got people over having some beers and shit. It, it, it's just a good one. It's a good one to have in the background because it's just full of laughs and shit, but it's a weird one too. Um, I enjoyed the shit out of it. It's a great one. I mean, not a great one. It's a fun one. Speaking of Fulci, we got uh, Demonia. Um, 1990 film from, you know, one of uh, Fulci's later films. Not really one of his better films. I know this movie has its fans and stuff, and Fulci being my favorite director, so... You know, sometimes I can be a little bit biased when it comes to Fulci, but I can also be very objective, too, because subjectivity obviously takes over um, a little bit when it comes to these films, because I always find Fulci films fun. This is not one of his better movies. In fact, this one, it's a little bit slow paced and stuff. It does have good atmosphere. It does have some really good scenes in it. But to me, this one is kind of disappointing, like Manhattan Baby. Manhattan Baby was made like right in the, in the heyday of Fulci's amazing run of films. And it's just so oddly placed because he has so many good films before and after, and that one's just weirdly placed in the middle as being such a big disappointment but you know for his later films i do like a lot of fulci's later films but this one um i will say man it was nice to see this movie in a good transfer from seven they did a great job on this but you know it is what it is it's still enjoyable i i enjoy it not one of his better ones though and last up for the seven titles that the wifey got me and she got me primitives now i've seen this movie before i haven't seen it in a long time yeah 1980 this one came out it's like um uh I want to say, I can't remember if this has a bunch of, it's the dude that did, I know Satan's Blade, or Satan's, Satan's Blade, yeah. If you directed that, I probably wouldn't be watching this shit. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so it was released as Savage Terror in the UK. That's the title that I know it under. I knew I'd seen this shit before. Yeah, Cannibal Film. I think it has like a bunch of, um, I, I could be thinking of something else. But like stock footage and shit like that. I don't know. I'm probably right. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But yeah, I knew it under Savage Terror. So um, section three video nasty under different title. But yeah, primitives. So can't comment on the uh, on the transfer uh, from um, from Code Red. I picked up Insect, which I can't stand this title for this movie because I know it as my father's Blue Monkey, William Freud. Um, no, William Freud is not my father. It's it's an ongoing joke because of my Facebook name. But anyways, I digress. Uh, Blue Monkey, fun little um, you know giant fucking insect killer type film set in a hospital. It's cool, man. It, it's just got a lot of heart and charm to it, man. I've always enjoyed this one. So happy to finally see this and get like a proper release. It it skipped DVD. It really did. You know, I I have the the um, the uh, VHS of this and stuff and. It's just so happy to finally see Freud getting some a little bit of love with his films and shit. Now we just need like Death Weekend and and of course uh, Killer Party, which is one of my favorites of all time. So, but yeah, that that transfer looks phenomenal. It looks crazy because I actually have a DVD bootleg of it, and it, it and actually that bootleg obviously taken from VHS rip, but looks phenomenal. It's like a really good one. So, um, all right, so moving into the Scorpion releasing, and we got uh, first up the Fury of the Wolfman, Paul Nashy film. This is the one I actually didn't watch this one. Um, I've heard really good things about this and I love Paul Nashi as, um, the slip covers, the star work is the same. If you're wondering, I love Paul Nashi when he plays the werewolf and shit. I, I just love Paul Nashi in general. He's such a great screen presence, man. Like so happy that he's been getting so much love over the last three, four, five years, you know, with all of his movies getting released and shit. It's just crazy. So, um, this is fantastic. Like to see this shit coming to Blu-ray and shit, but yeah, got to check this one out. Haven't seen that one yet. I did watch this one, another Paul Nashi film, and I think that's already four films from Paul Nashi. Um, Assignment Terror. Now, this is a ridiculous premise that I absolutely <laughs> started laughing at the premise while I was watching this shit, man. It's like basically about these aliens that come down to Earth, and they want, and they have this diabolical plan to take over the wor the, the the Earth by using, you know, um, Frankenstein's monster 
the mummy and werewolf and, you know, vampire, like Dracula and shit like that, to use these, you know, these basically universal monsters, which they don't mention in the film, but uh, to take over the world. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous premise, but it's so much fun. It's so ridiculous. I love the mummy in this, man. The mummy just looks, look at him. The mummy. Oh, where is he? Right there. He's so good. And he, oh man, when he when you first get introduced to the mummy in this film, <laughs> and he busts through the wall, I fucking the way he's. Oh my god, it's just funny as hell to me, man. It's great shit, man. But assignment terror. That was fantastic. And so a couple more here from Scorpion. We picked up. We picked up. The wife bought me fan of the opera. Um, on Blu-ray, um, actually, it's funny. These next three are, you know, Argento films. These are all the Argento Scorpion releases. We had just done these three films on Italian Month for the last part of the Argento uh, filmography, I guess you would call it. And I had to watch these things all on the muddy ass DVDs and shit like that. So I haven't gotten around to checking out the Blu-rays yet, but I imagine that the transfers are fantastic. But you know, Phantom of the Opera is it's a bad movie, but it does have some pretty laughable parts that are actually pretty entertaining. So. Um, yeah, Argento's later part of his career, man. Whew, it's rough. It's rough, man. But oh, the scene in the in the cave. That's all I'm gonna say. Just if you guys know what I'm talking about, that shit is so it's belly inducing lot funny. It's so fucking it's so funny. Oh my god, it's hilarious. And Sleepless actually is pretty decently um It's a pretty decent film. You know, it's it's a 2001 kind of giallo and um you know, it's, it's obviously way, way past Argento's prime for, like, the giallo telling and stuff like that. But this one, for his later films, I would say this is probably one of his better ones. I actually can't wait to see the transfer on this one. I've heard really good things about this, so. Oh, nice. Got a commentary with Troy Howard, which I'm assuming he probably does one on here, too, if they got him for this. Yep, he does one on here, too. Nice. Cool. Troy Howard. He's very knowledgeable. So that's Sleepless. And, of course, we have the abomination of the card player. <laughs> I'm happy to own this because the DVD, it looks so bad. Like, Anchor Bay release, it's just, it, I know the film obviously was shot on sh shitty stock and stuff, but man, it looks terrible. And, yep, Troy Howard does one on here too. So they just probably got him in the studio and hooked it up for three uh, commentaries. So, yeah, it's a car player. Pretty cool. I actually like the slipcovers or the, the artwork that they did for this and shit. So, that's kind of cool. All right, so that is the scorpion stuff moving on to some arrows finally got around to pick an upgrading kioma i absolutely love this movie franco nero uh spaghetti western directed by enzo g casaleri casaleri um love this movie man it's just it's fantastic dude he plays like a half i think they even call him a half breed on here they do he stars in a churchill role of half breed gunfighter who returns from the killing fields of the civil war to find his hometown riddled with the plague it's great man i mean if you're a fan of franco nero which you know you probably are if you if you like spaghetti westerns and django and shit but this is this is a great character love kioma happy to finally upgrade this shit man it's great so even though the dvd looks fantastic uh, this is kind of, I actually have another Blu-ray of this, but I wanted to grab the Arrow one. This is part of the Arrow sale that I grabbed a few titles on. And that's the City of the Dead. And I kept it on this artwork because that's the title I, I actually like. Um, you know, it, you, when you get it, it's under the Horror Hotel title. I don't know what it is about that title. It just kind of bugs me. Um, but the City of the Dead, I believe, is the, the UK title? Yeah, Horror Hotel, I believe, is the American cut yeah, the alternate U.S. Cat Horror Hotel. That's right. That's why they named it differently. But yeah, so the original title is City of Dead. I love this movie. It's fantastic, man. Christopher Lee, kind of. I don't really want. I, I don't want to give anything away. But uh, the transfer is fantastic on this. It just looks crazy, man. Crazy. Um, such a dark film. Major, major dark film. But I love it. City of the Dead. Uh, yeah, and you know what's crazy about this? Is that I actually thought I had this. I swear to God that I ordered this movie once before from Arrow and never never got it and didn't even realize. I'm going to have to go back through my history. I swear to God I did. So I kept thinking I had this and I was like, you know what? I'm going to double check. I didn't. And Jack Arnold is one of my favorite directors of all time. Especially you guys listen to the, you know, the nine hour marathon video of that, but our podcast that, but the incredible shrinking man. It's just a fun ass film, man, about this dude that like basically something happens to him and he, he starts to shrink and then everything that we take for granted, like, you know, little insects and shit like that become his, um, you know, his potential demise, you know, become his main enemies and shit. It's really cool, man. He gets trapped in the basement of his house and he's got to like make it up and shit. It's really cool. I, I love this movie, man. It's cool effects. 
Um, again, Jack Arnold directed this. Um, when did this? 1960. What is it? 57? Yeah, 57, 56, 57, somewhere in there. So good film. Good shit. I uh, picked up a couple um, film noirs in here. Again, they were on sale, so I was like, shit, man, I might as well grab these. Uh, I've actually heard this one's really good, so let me know if you guys have seen these. So, um, so Dark the Night. It's actually if uh, Eastwood Fan for Life is watching or my homeboy Cinemax, Cinemaniac77, Donnie, if you guys are watching, I know you guys are into film noir, so let me know. So there's that one right there, and then there's this one, Nightfall. I this cover was actually really cool. I haven't opened up these. I'm sure they got reverse one. I'm, I'm assuming they do. I don't know. So that's Nightfall. And in this one, I've actually heard really good things about, I think, I think this is the one. And that is Phantom Lady. So, yeah, that one looks pretty cool. And then last up for the Arrow stuff is a couple box sets. And, of course, we have the Showa Era box set. Now, I'm actually kind of glad that Amazon fucked me on the big, big ass box, like the Herschel Gordon Lewis equivalent cereal box size Gamera set. Because I really like these, these smaller sets, man. I'm actually considering selling my Herschel Gordon Lewis cereal box set and getting the smaller set just because... It is a room thing, but I actually really prefer these smaller boxes and cases. Like, I'm just getting to the point where I'm just like, do I need that shit, man? Like, seriously. But, um, but yeah, so we got, uh, oh, here we go. It's like in this order. Gamera, the giant monster. So I reversed that one right here. I kept these ones the same, uh, the new commissioned artwork, because it has both titles on them. So Gamma vs. Uh, Baragon and Gamma vs. Gaios. Oh my god, I'm just going to butcher the shit out of these titles. Gamma vs. Virus. Virus? And Gamma vs. Giron. I can never say these things properly. They're so close, but you know how it goes. And Gamma vs. Jaeger and Gamma vs. Zigra. Derek's probably just screaming at the screen right now going, dude, those are the worst pronunciations ever. So that's really cool, man. I mean, you get seven films in this set right here. Seven, and then of course you got the other four films in this one, which is the High Sea Era, which these are awesome too. And then we got here's the first one. So we got the Guardian of the Universe camera from I think this is these are the ones from the nineties. Um, then we got the Attack Gamera Two Attack of Legion, and I've actually seen a couple of these. I actually have the other. I think the not the Mill... Are they Mill Creek sets? Yeah, I think I do. Gamma 3, Revenge of Iris. I actually like the 90s ones. They're kind of cool. And then we got uh, Gamma the Brave, which I've never seen before. So so that's really cool, man. I'm really happy to have these smaller sets. And you know, it's funny. I didn't even realize... I put these things down next to each other. And I didn't even realize, but they go together. I was like, oh, that's super cool. <laughs> I'd never seen anyone do it until I did it myself. I'm like, woohoo, I discovered something. No, it's, it, that's just fantastic. That looks really cool. Love it. Love it. So big ups to Arrow, man, for knocking it out the damn park. Dude, my nose is so itchy. Sorry. I keep scratching it. I'm just like, ah, oh, it's like, I don't know what's going on. All right. So let's get into um, some Black Friday pickups here. I'll start with the AFCA stuff. So I picked up a couple of the newer releases that were on there, and then I went back and grabbed um, some of the ones I was missing from the collection. So I do have them all now with the exception I'll be showing the two newer ones, I guess, when I get my Vinegar Syndrome package from this month or whatever. Anyways, love this line. First up is Bat Pussy. This one was actually banned on Amazon, probably because of the title and the fact that it's a straight up porno. Now, the cool thing about this movie, though, is that's really intriguing, and I've never heard of this ever happening before, but they have no idea who directed this. They actually found this film reel in the basement of like some southern city or some shit like that. And they just, it was pure hilarity. It's pure hilarity. So they actually made a feature out of this. There's even a bonus movie, Robot Loves Slaves, which I did not watch. I did watch Bat Pussy. It says 1970 question mark. It runs about 55 minutes. It's so raw and uncut, like literally. Like you can hear the director giving direction to his actors that are on the bed fucking each other. And it's just, it's basically this dude and this girl filthy talking for like the whole time it's literally them just oh you fucking it's so bad it like i was pissing myself laughing the whole time it's hilarious but anyways the the thing is with bat pussy the bat pussy character is when i guess when people are having sex it makes her pussy quiver 
and then she goes and investigates and then she gets involved with it. It's ridiculous. It, and it's like totally uncut too. Like these scenes, I love it. They'll stop and they'll hear the director talking. I'm like, oh, okay. And they'll just keep going back to doing her there. I'm like, oh my God, it's amazing. Like only Africa could release something like that, man. Oh, absolutely hilarious. Dirty motherfucking, dirty motherfuckers fucking in my holy Gotham City. Yeah, and that, that's actually a quote from, uh, from Bat Pussy in the film. It's so funny. Oh, dude, this is, this is something you got to see once in your life. It's a quick watch. There's Bat Pussy. And that that's how she gets around. Instead of having, like, a Batmobile, she has, like, one of those little workout bouncy balls. And she's and there's, like, scenes, like, the transitions in this are, like, her <laughs> bouncing through the fucking field and shit, man. It's so funny, dude. I was, like, dying. Absolutely dying. Now, I'm wondering if this bonus movie is from the same director. Maybe it was on the same reel or something or reels. I don't know. I really don't know a whole lot about it, but this is, fuck, this is funny. This is hilarious. It's like one of the funniest releases of my entire collection. It's, it's hilarious, man. Oh, man, that was fun. Um, and next up here, we got uh, The Violent Years. Um, and this actually comes with uh, Autonomy of a Psycho. Also, which I believe I have. Did something weird release those? I, I swear to God they did. Um, but yeah, so I... But yeah, Ed Wood any direct, uh, directed The Violent Years. I've never seen it before. I've seen a lot of Ed Wood's like, earlier stuff, obviously, Plan 9 from Outer Space and Glenda vs. Glenda and you know, shit like that. So, um, But I've never seen any of his like later, later... It says this was actually 1956. I've never seen this one. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this, man, because I actually like Ed Wood's stuff because it's, you know, again, it's so bad. It's like amazing. Um, picked up, finally upgraded this, actually, uh, God Monster at Indian Flats. This is fantastic. I have the DVD of this also, but I love this one, man. Western horror film from 1973, it says on here. I think that might be wrong. I don't know. Um, bonus movie, The Legend of Bigfoot. And that's cool, man, that, they, that they're putting like a whole pile of like bonus features on these releases and shit, man. I love this line, man, this Africa line. They do a lot of different types of shit. It's kind of all over the place. But a lot of, you know, obviously exploitation and horror and just oddball releases and shit like that. So, yeah, that's cool. I know my homeboy Zach is a big fan of that. And then we got uh, Take It In, Take It Out in Trade, another Ed Wood film, and this one's got the Love Feast on it too, which is really cool. And I love that they do these bonus features, great stuff. So another Ed Wood film I've never seen before from 1970. I want to say this is more like on the straight up um, exploit or uh, almost like porn angle, but I don't think it's actually porn though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Take It Out in Trade. Looking forward to that. Now, these ones really intrigued me, man. I, I knew nothing about these films. And what got me intrigued about these, uh, the films of Sarah Jacobson, is the fact that these actually come from the 90s. Like, usually a lot of Afka and, you know, um, something weird video and shit, it's, it's mostly like 60s and 70s, like late 50s, 60s and 70s type shit. Yeah, these are from the, from the 90s, 96 and 93. Um, Mary Jane's not a virgin anymore. I was a teenage serial killer. So, I'm really looking forward to checking these out. I have no idea what to expect from these. I'm just kind of quickly trying to read this, but I don't know. So, if anybody knows, man, give me a shot. Give me a shot. Let me know. Leave a comment or shoot me, whatever. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, drug stories. I actually thought this was like like some type of weird compilation. I don't even really know what the fuck this is, to be honest. Uh, so, it's a bunch of... Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I'm tripping. So basically what this is, is these are a bunch of like, these were like drug free type short movies and commercials and type shit that, okay. What's the best way to prevent young people from destroying their lives in a downward spiral of drug fueled jubilation? Obviously the answer is send an LSD tab, spider, blah, blah, blah. Actually. So I think is the best in educational drug scare films. <laughs> Holy fucking Afghan. <laughs> something weird would ever release a compilation of educational drug scare films from the 20th century from the 20th century did they really have to put the 20th century when the fuck else would these have been made i mean it's not like they make this shit anymore yeah these are probably um actually it doesn't really say i wonder if they have any of the ones from like when nancy reagan was doing just say no garbage fucking biggest hypocritical fucking campaign in the, in the history of america right there they're the ones bringing in the goddamn cocaine. Um, 
But yeah, this shit just looks hilarious. I, I, I actually gonna watch this soon because this shit is just cracking me up, man. The Scare Films Archive Volume 1. And the fact that it's dubbed as Volume 1 is even funnier to me. That's that's hilarious. All right, we got uh, Limbo. Um, this one, I believe, is... Yeah, it's a short movie, 55 minutes. It's 1999. I think it's 1999 shot on video. Um, yeah, 1999, directed by Tina Cruz. Cool. So I'm looking forward to checking this one. It actually looks pretty cool. I'm a, you know me, I'm a big fan of shot on video films, especially some of the later ones too, obviously the 80s and early 90s, but some of the later 90 ones are actually a little better film stocks so they actually look better, but some of them are really good. Uh, upgrade for me, I think I have the DVD that's also, uh, sometimes Aunt Martha does dreadful things. So I believe this one. Yeah, 1971. Uh, I don't even think I watched my DVD to be honest. I'm like, I'm stupid like that. But I love that, that artwork right there, if, if it'll focus. That's awesome. That's great artwork right there. Cool. So, yeah, looking forward to checking that out for the first time. <laughs> uh, speaking of shot on video films, Scary Tales. I'm so happy to see this one get a release. 1993. Look at that artwork. That is, like, that is some terrible shot on video artwork. That's amazing. Like, it's just so awesome, dude. Scary Tales proves that the films of John Waters and Don Dohler aren't the only genre miracles from Baltimore. <laughs> they called this a genre miracle. <laughs> and they compared it to Don Dohler and John Waters. <laughs> I don't know why I just thought that was so funny. That was fucking hilarious. All right. Oh, they even have the 87 demo version of Scary Tales. It sounds like it was a fucking... It sounds like a band. Scary Tales, the, the fucking 80s hair metal band. All right, um, so next we got Things to Come plus The Dirty Doll, Smut Without Smut. I believe, I don't even know which side is supposed I think this is actually the side that... Uh, 1976 and 1973 films, 71 minutes and 50... Wow, these are really short. Yeah, these are really short movies, man. It's crazy. But yeah, they seem very exploitive and stuff, but I love, I love these double feature artworks and shit. Fucking cool, man. Big fan. And last up for the Afka stuff is, this is the one that really, She Mob plus The Girl from Pussycat. This one just looked, when I first looked at this, I instantly thought Nazi exploitation. For some reason, maybe it's the way the lettering is, maybe it's the S and stuff, it just looks like Nazi exploitation to me. It's crazy, it totally does. The Girl from Pussycat, 1969, and She Mob is from 1968. Um, yeah, these are just so something weird videos, man. Yeah, as you can tell, I mean, the, the logo's even on there. I like call the Africa stuff, but yeah, exploitive, oddball films. I don't really know much about these ones, so, but I'll, I'm really going to get into this stuff. But now I have the whole line, so I'm pretty excited. So, um, okay, so moving along here, let's get into, actually, I'll put this over here, into the Vinegar Syndrome titles. First up, actually, this is not from, well, this is part of their uh, sister lineups. And what labels this again? Uh, it's like, Oh man, I, uh, what is the name of this sub label that they just put out? Alphabets. I can't remember. Anyways, here's a slip cover for it Alphabet City. Um, yeah, and here's the original artwork. I can't remember the, the sister label of this. FC. I can't remember. That's so funny. Anyways, I know what it is. It's just slipping my mind right now. But this was a really cool movie, man. It's basically about Vincent uh, Spano's character. He's like kind of he's like involved in the in the mob. This is like early kind of early eighties, nineteen eighty four. This movie came out. He's part of the mob and he does you know mob shit and stuff. Anyways, he asked he's been he gets asked to do something that he really doesn't want to fucking do, like burn down his you know his family's apartment building, right? Because that was a big thing in the in the mob days in the eighties and shit. So of course he has to like go on the run and shit. And it's really cool, man. The aesthetic of this movie is fantastic. It's shot really well. It's got really cool lighting. It's just it's got a, it's a really vibrant, interesting like like super serious tone type film and shit like i really enjoyed this man i thought it was great um yeah alphabet city and why can i not find the label on someone's probably screaming it at me right now it's written on here but apparently i'm getting so old that i can't read what it says and my eyes are good it's just really dark but anyways i recommend this alphabet city was really cool very very different uh okay so we got the caller and this was a first time watch for me, man. Malcolm McDowell and uh, uh, Madeline Smith. And this was a, this was a trip, man. I I always knew about this movie, but I'd never seen it before. And um, 
it's an oddball. It's it's a strange little fucking film about this this character, um, you know, played by uh, Madeline Smith. She's like at this house in, in her home, like it's isolated in the um, in the forest and stuff. And then someone comes to the door, played by Malcolm McDowell, and then they get in kind of like this cat and mouse game of like like crime. They start talking crime and developing things, and and it, it's really odd. And the whole movie is basically these two characters dialoguing but it's so interesting you're like man where is this going you're just waiting for it to go somewhere and then it does and then there's something happens you're just like what the fuck it's crazy it's like a total head trip man it's crazy i enjoyed this man i thought it was really cool um what really sells these movies is that the acting kind of sells it too i think they they bounced off each other and it really worked so i thought the color the color was cool uh the 11th commandment um man i thought this movie was fucking terrible man like really bad really bad I'm, i might i might give this one a rewatch and stuff but i just i wasn't giving it the proper i don't well i did i did give it the proper attention but i just oh my god i just thought this was terrible um i don't know i'll get i'll give this one a rewatch sometime i just really did not care for that <laughs> and then of course we got don't panic here um another film from um ruben Ga uh what's his name rubian rubian galando jr yeah, Cemetery Terror, man, which I absolutely fucking love. So I was I was super happy, and I actually called this title that was going to get announced. I was like, they're, they they got to be releasing Don't Panic now. Like, they got to be releasing it. So, of course, they'd release Grave Robbers just prior in Cemetery Terror, which I love. Um, this is an oddball slasher film. It's it's crazy, kind of over the top and shit. It's not as good as the other films that um, Vinegar Syndrome previously released, but it's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's definitely unique. It's definitely unique in its approach to what it's trying to do with the slasher film. So... It's okay. Uh, Pandemonium, I'd seen before. I actually watch this for prepping for like the 82 show. It's it's just a, it's a horror spoof, obviously. Um, spoof in films like Carrie and shit. <laughs> it's like, it's ridiculous. Um, I, I would say it's probably not as good as Wacko, but it's better than, what was it, the National Lampoon's one that came out the same year or something like that? That one's fucking terrible, but this one's kind of in the middle. It gets a little bit tiresome after a while the jokes are a little bit um it, it's super 80s spoofy type shit but i loved it like that original artwork is is ridiculously 80s i love it there are some funny gags with the carry the carry stuff that was kind of funny and then of course fade to black finally gets his blu-ray release here in um i think this is actually the first time it's been released on blu-ray so uh happy to upgrade this man i'm just so happy to get rid of my region 2 dvd um I love this movie, man. I love this character study of this dude, man. It's great. Like he's he's all of us, you know. We're if you're if you're a film a genre film lover or just film lover in general and stuff, you know. You, this guy's he's in us a little bit, you know, in all of us. Maybe not going completely crazy and shit, but I like the I like the way this character develops into what he what he becomes and stuff like that. I mean, you can only really take so much and shit, but I absolutely love. Um, fade to black is pretty cool stuff. So I put the original slip cover on here. It actually does come with an extra one, which I really don't know. Like for somebody that doesn't really care too much about slip covers, it's like, what the fuck am I going to do with these? But, but yeah, I highly recommend fade to black. If you've never seen it, it's a great, great film, man. I think the performance by the lead is fantastic. I always forget his name. Uh, then we got perfect strangers, which I was like, that's crazy, man. That, um, Larry Cohen getting some more love here. Pretty interesting film. Um, basically about this dude that uh, um, confesses, like he works for the mob and he confesses that, you know, this little kid may have saw him do something, you know, murder somebody or whatever. And so he befriends the mother and starts to date her and shit like that. And the main goal is because, you know, the mob, they're like, well, you need to take the kid out. You know, we're all, we're about leaving no witnesses. Even though he's little, they can probably just, you know, streamline it out him by doing some type of hypnotizing shit or something. It's kind of an interesting premise. I like it, man. It goes, you know, it's pretty good. Perfect Strangers. I've seen it before. Another one I was so happy to upgrade. I just had a, a fucking bootleg, a really, really bad bootleg of Silent Madness. Um, and you can watch this in uh, 3D also, which is kind of cool. You know, it's kind of cool. And, you know, they actually went the extra distance and actually gave you some glasses in here, <laughs> which is pretty cool. I can't stand 3D. So I am not a big fan of watching shit in 3D. So it's kind of an interesting artwork right there. I always know this film as being this 
artwork, which is fantastic. It, it's it's a decent slasher film. I've always enjoyed it. It's nothing crazy. It's one of those films that, you know, like Rawhead Rex, where everybody was like, we want Silent Madness and Fade to Black and, and Rawhead Rex on Blu-ray forever and ever and ever. And then they finally come and then no one talks about them because <laughs> they finally get to see them. They're like, oh, they're not as good as I <laughs> thought they were going to be. Fade to Black, though, is actually legitimately good. But Silent Madness, I think this is pretty fun. It's nothing crazy. You know, it's kind of more run-of-the-mill type slasher film from the from the time. But if you're into slashes, early 80s slashes, shit, good stuff. I think it was like 84. Yep. 84. And then we got Best Friends. They were best friends until, right? Uh, this is like a straight drama. Basically about four friends um, that uh, kind of go on a trip and stuff and... This one, the one brother here, or the one friend or whatever, I think it's his brother. Yeah, anyways, he doesn't want his other brother getting married to this chick, and he basically goes out of his way to, like, break them up and shit. It's it's, it's pretty dramatic shit. It actually goes, it goes somewhere where I wasn't expecting this to go. I actually kind of like this movie. I thought it was pretty cool, you know, for, I thought it was going to be more exploitive, but it's, it's pretty straight-up drama. <laughs> uh, old Dracula, David Niven, Niven? I always can never say his name properly and old Dracula. Now I didn't really know much about this and, and watching this shit, man, I fucking started pissing myself laughing. It's, it's like, it's got that type of kind of subtle comedy. That's ridiculous, but it's super fun. And it doesn't like overdo it. It's really funny. It's basically about this, you know, Dracula character that wants to resurrect his, um, his dead bride. And so he basically, he has like all these girls and he, he's basically picking and choosing which ones he wants to, you know, resurrect his, um, his wife, you know, pick and choose the blood from these girls. Anyways, they take this blood back to the lab and shit and it gets mixed up and his wife gets resurrected and they, well, they realize it got mixed up when his wife resurrects as a black woman, <laughs> but his reaction is like, oh, and then she's like, oh, I'm black. And it's like the funniest shit ever. It is like, I laugh so hard, man. It was fucking great. And there's just so much good jokes in this. I actually really enjoy this. It won't be for everybody. It's kind of goofy and shit, but pretty fun from 1974. Yeah, I was kind of taken back by this one. I was expecting it to be absolutely horrible, but it was pretty fun. Um, then we're getting into the VSA titles. Uh, this is number 10, Martial Law. And of course, it comes with the sequel, Martial Law 2. Now, I'd never seen uh, Martial Law 2 before. I'd seen Martial Law and um, it's pretty cool, man, because Chad McQueen, who is Steve McQueen's son, actually stars in this film as this, like, martial art, mar martial artist, kung fu cop. And basically, his partner in this film is, uh, what's her name? Uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Rothrock. And she, she made herself, a, she was a pretty big name in the 90s for, like, you know, directed video type, you know, kung fu martial arts type movies. And she, she's pretty badass, man. She's pretty fucking badass. First one actually has John Carradine in it also. Or, I mean, David Carradine, not John Carradine. David Carradine is in it also, so... But fun movies. You know, storylines, are they are what they are. They're, not, they're nothing crazy and stuff. And then the second one uh, isn't starring um, um, uh, Chad McQueen. Uh, who the fuck is in the second one, man? Uh, I can't remember the dude. But this dude right here, I wreck. I always forget his name. But, of course, it has Anthony Roth, Roth, uh, Rothrock in it. Um, and, you know, it's not as good. The second one's not as good, but it's, yeah, it's still pretty fun. But these are good releases, man. Transfers are crazy, man. They look outstanding. And, of course, the one that I've been seeing, nothing but talk about. People are just freaking out about this release. And um, everyone's so bummed out that it was, like, out of print so quick. And I'm like, man, these are the VSAs. You know, they're going out of print super fast and shit, so you got to pick them up. This is a fun movie, man. You can tell that this film was directed by a stunt uh, stunt guy, like a stunt coordinator, stunt guy himself, John Stewart, because this whole movie is just stunts. I mean, this, the storyline, it is what it is. It's like, who cares? You're watching this type of action stunt movie, man. It's all about that shit. So basically, um, it's just a fun fucking movie, man. That's all I can say. Explosions, ridiculous stunts. Like, I just love movies like this, man. I love watching real stunts and shit. It's crazy. It's so cool, man. Action USA, definitely a blast. Um, yeah, so isn't someone re-releasing this? Like MVD or some or no Mill Creek or somebody's releasing it? I don't know. I just saw a post, I can't remember who the fuck it is, but I love these slip box things and yeah. So if you wanna collect these, man, you gotta get on them right away. And last up for the Vinegar Syndrome releases, of course, is Forgotten Gialli Volume Deuce. And I am a big fan of these movies. I love my dear killer. This is an upgrade for me. And I, I'm a big fan of this, man. The opening scene in this movie still makes me laugh 
so hard. I, I don't know why it does. It's the way it goes down. I don't want to ruin it, but it's pure hilarity. It's totally not supposed to be that funny, but it's maybe it's just my sense of humor, but it's so funny. I mentioned this to people before and they're like, yeah, it actually is pretty fucking funny. But my dear killer, awesome giallo. I love it. The French Sex Murders finally watched this for the first time, actually. I thought this was actually pretty good. I was expecting this shit to be a lot more sleazy, considering it's called The French Sex Murders. Uh, it actually really isn't. It's actually pretty damn good, though, man. <laughs> so there's, there's a decapitated head in the back there. It's pretty awesome. But, yeah, no, this is pretty good, too. And the transfers are fantastic on these. I watched both of them. And I have, I actually have the, the DVD for this also. I didn't watch this uh, transfer yet, but The Girl in Room 2A... Um, Mono Macabre will release this on disc back in the day. So, but yeah, good stuff from this one. Another one I, I enjoy. So, and of course, volume three just got announced cause I am recording this on February 3rd or whatever. So the third one, I actually ordered the package. So of course that'll be coming. And that's got some great titles in there also, which I'm super stoked about. So, but, uh, let's take a little break from the horror and exploitation and we'll get into, I guess, kind of exploitive stuff. I don't know big action stack anyways here we'll start with some 88 films some more jackie chan's i love what 88 is doing with these jackie chan films it's just ridiculous uh shell and wooden men right there gotta love these man there's original artwork right there which next time i do a shell video that's what you'll see because these slip covers they're okay but i prefer them without uh spiritual kung fu jackie chan i think this one right here Oh, man. Yeah, this one's got a couple different cuts. No, for the Hong Kong original cut. This one just has the one cut on this one. Okay, I think this one, maybe this one only has one cut. So, uh, yeah, these are older Jackie Chan films too, man. This is 76. You know, that's like right at the start of his, um, you know, starring roles and shit. 1978 right here. Spiritual Kung Fu. Love these artworks. I love the original artworks, man. They're so great. And I think uh, New Fist of Fury... Um, this one right here, I think has, two, doesn't have two cuts of the movie or maybe I'm just tripping balls and they actually don't. Oh no, there is. Yeah. Yeah. There is two. Yeah, that's right. It has the original 76 cut, which is 120 minutes. And then it has the 1980 cut, which is 83 minutes. What the fuck is with that? It must be the re re it says re edited. I'm wondering if the, no, it doesn't. I was maybe was thinking it was like an American cut of the film or something like that, but I love this artwork. That Jackie Chan artwork is phenomenal. But yeah, what a what a difference in cuts, man. They recut it to like 17 minutes. It's crazy. Or not 17 minutes, but uh, like 40 minutes almost. So Jackie Chan, good shit. Uh, and then I'm just, I went on this tear of upgrading and grabbing some Arnie films that I actually didn't have. This was a upgrade for me, End of Days. Um, I should rewatch this the other night. I actually went, on Sunday, I watched like eight army films. I, I literally sat around for like 16 straight hours and just watched Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. It was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I said one of those days. Uh, ended days. I actually really enjoy this. Some of the effects are dated and stuff, but I, I, I think it's really cool that he did a movie like this because it borders horror. You know, it's, it's you know, he's him fighting the fucking devil and shit. It's kind of cool, man. I, I enjoyed it. I, I, again, I hadn't seen it since... Uh, oh, it's been years. I remember seeing that in the theater actually when it came out in 99. I think it came out in 99, yeah. Um, upgraded Commando. I know this is not the the Best Buy exclusive, whatever the director's cut. In fact, I don't even know what is different about the director's cut to the actual theatrical version. Um, if anybody knows, just let me know. I mean, if it's worth even hunting that one down and stuff. But I, the, I, all I knew is that this transfer on this kind of um, catalog title release is really good. Like, this one looks fantastic. It's crazy. Um, super fun. And then this is one I actually didn't own. I'd never actually seen before, and that's Collateral Damage. So I had to grab this because I, like I said, I hadn't seen it. Um, it's okay, man. You can tell this one suffered from production cuts and things like that. I mean, this one was supposed to be released around the time 9-11 happened. So it got delayed a little bit. And I know they made some edits to the to the narrative and cut out a, a plain jacking scene from the, the female um, lead in this film. So, but it's okay. Like it does have its moments. It, it does have some decent moments. It's all right. Upgraded. And I didn't go for the separate ones because I was like, fuck it. You know, I just, I'll grab this. This was like 10 bucks. The transfers are fantastic. Besides, to be honest, man, I don't know what is up with my, with my nose today, but it is so itchy. Um, I love the Conan the Barbarian, but the Destroyer, man, I seriously, I don't mind the movie, but man, they really dumbed down that tone. Like the original film has got a great kind of dark tone to it. It's, it's awesome. The second one just has so many characters in it. 
and they it's so it's just it's like a kid's film you know it's crazy what they do with it man it just it, they totally got away from that kind of darker tone made it light-hearted and stuff and i don't really overly care for it too much um but i don't hate it man i mean it's it's pretty interesting to see like wilt chamberlain in the second one and and um grace jones which is kind of an interesting cast like how do you just call will chamberlain and be like yo man you want to be in a conan sequel <laughs> fuck it's crazy man um but yeah the first one's so classic man james earl jones is amazing and uh arnie's awesome as usual and one i actually didn't even own on dvd which i was surprised i, I couldn't believe i didn't um i think this is like this and collateral damage plus some of the newer ones i didn't have but it was eraser and i actually really i i like eraser man i think it's good man you know, it kind of took me back to like 96 and shit. I think I saw this one in the theater too. And it, yeah, it's fun. And then upgraded, actually, kind of. I actually don't have the DVD for this anymore, but Terminator 3, which, you know, it is what it is. It's okay. Um, I did, You know what I hate about this movie is that they just do shit that they, they just kind of redid some stuff from part two that's just like uh, not as good, right? I know a lot of problem. A lot of people had problems with the chick that plays the... Uh, the evil Terminator in this and stuff, but she's okay. She's nice to look at and shit, but yeah, it, it is off putting though. It's weird to see her in that role. I don't know what it is, but otherwise it's not really that great. But, uh, and then of course I grabbed, uh, Terminator Genesis, which I've actually never seen before. So, you know, for a couple bucks for this and I grabbed also dark fate. I do have salvation coming too, because I actually never grabbed that one either. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much at the point, like there's just a couple other movies I just need to upgrade, but I have like every Arnold f film now, um, starting with the Conan films. That's kind of where I start his career off. So anyways, I'm a big fan, but move along, uh, Cutthroat City. This is uh, directed by the RZA, the RZA, RZA, Shop RZA. Um, yeah, I didn't really know what to expect from this, but I actually really like this movie, man. Cutthroat City is basically about these guys. It takes place like after Hurricane Katrina, I think in 2005 or whatever. They come back to the city. It's all riddled and shit. And there's not really a lot of job opportunities and stuff. And they kind of are forced to do what they need to do because there's literally no work and stuff um, in the neighborhood that they come from and shit like that. So it's it's kind of cool, man. I actually really enjoyed it, man. Some of the characters shit, it's got a pretty bleak ending to it and shit. And it's cool, man. I enjoyed it. I thought the Rizzo's direction was okay in this. And getting into some Wellgo USA releases, I finally picked up Wolf Warrior. I seen this. Um, I think what did it come out a couple years in 2015? Yeah, this. I, you know, I thought this was pretty good, man. Um, with uh, with Yu Ying and of course Scott Adkins, and um, you know, I, I thought it was a decent film and shit like that. And then I started hearing about the sequel, and people were like dude, it is like off the fucking chain. Amazing. Like you got to grab the sequel and shit. I'm like, okay. So I had to pick up Wolf Warrior and then I grabbed Wolf Warrior too, which I've recently heard a lot of people talk about, man. Like my boy, Simon from Australia, I think was talking about this one. Um, explosive, explosive action um, and shit like that. So yeah, this one came on 17, man. I, I don't know. Maybe it just got released. I'm, I don't even know, but I heard this shit is just bat shit. It's like totally bad shit, so I'm fucking excited to check that out. And then I got in the, the Donnie Yen kick, and I, I grabbed Chasing the Dragon. Um, this was really cheap. It was like five bucks, and I think it's loot. Maybe that's the book. Like, I don't know. But, um, yeah, Chasing the Dragon. Let me know if you've seen it. Another Donnie Yen film. Special ID. Um, I love Donnie Yen. I'm a huge Donnie Yen fan, so, like, I had a couple films I didn't have, so I grabbed a special, special ID. And then I grabbed... Fury, and this movie is interesting. This is, um, uh, fuck, I always want to, was it Vietnamese? I think it's Vietnamese. Yeah, I think it's Vietnamese. This is actually the very first, like, Vietnamese film ever to have a theatrical release, I think, in the U.S. and stuff. Um, it's kind of like Taken. It, it honestly kind of reminded me of Taken. It's that type of storyline. Mother gets, her daughter gets abducted. Um, you know, the mother actually used to work for the mob and shit like that. Anyways, this uh, this group of people end up stealing her daughter and shit, and she's got to go fucking you know, you know, go do some bat shit kung fu shit on their asses and get her and get her back and shit. So it's pretty cool, man. It, it's it's decent, man. It's got some really awesome um, you know fight sequences and shit. And so I enjoyed Fury. It was good. And I also grabbed Shadow. This was like 
five bucks. I was like, shit, man, I'm just gonna grab this. Um, I know it's a period piece, it looks pretty damn awesome, but I, I'm a big fan of these Wellgo USA releases, man, so they released a lot of good shit, so looking forward to checking this one out. Don't really know much about Shadow, so thought I'd give that one a shot. Um, oh, yeah, and so the last two from this stack here, uh, the wifey picked me up the new Scooby-Doo movies, the almost complete collection of the uh, the early 70s. Um, I think this is missing the Adams Family episode because they obviously couldn't get the rights to it and shit. What the fuck is going on upstairs? So, you know, it's funny, like, when I... I thought this was going to be coming in a box set and shit. I was like, this is all? It's like in a, just a normal Amory case? I'm like, this is fucking crazy, man. It's literally like two discs. I'm like, this is nuts. With a late, your little uh, um, episode guide there. It's crazy. But anyways, you guys know I'm a big Scooby-Doo fan. And I'm just happy to see these things get the, you know, this type of release. So pretty cool. Kind of expensive for what that is, though. But, uh, yeah, so last up for these releases, whatever, um, I got the uh, Film Noir Dark Side of Cinema Volume 2, the Blu-ray set. <laughs> I actually got the Blu-ray set. So there is fall, f there's fall, what? there's four volumes to these. I'll, I'll eventually grab the other two volumes. I'm just, you know, I haven't even watched any of these yet, so. But this one has the female animal. Uh, the Price of Fear. Man, I love these artworks, man. I am such a big fan. Thunder on the Hill. So, yeah. So, that's Volume 2. Volume 3 and 4 are easy, very easy to get. Very cheap, too. So, yeah. Film Noir. Some more to the collection. And, excuse my reach over here. But we get into the 4K releases. Save them for the last. The last part of the haul. Uh, yeah, there's, oh, I guess there's kind of an order here, but not really. First up, I did grab the Terminator 2. Um, 4K. I didn't even have this on Blu-ray, so it went from DVD right to 4K, but I guess I do have the Blu-ray now because it comes with one. Uh, the transfer is ridiculous. It looks so good. Um, oh, yeah, for the people, I, I guess I didn't even think of that, but I guess I probably could have just shown, but I did get a, a new TV. Um, you know, I've been getting bugged, you know, like, when are you going to get the 4K and stuff, and it turns out that the wife kind of pushed me into it because I know that sounds ridiculous, but she wanted to convert the our spare room upstairs into like a full gaming room. And so put the TV that I used to use and then bought a 75 inch uh, Samsung. <laughs> so I kind of went like ridiculously huge with it. But yeah, the Terminator 2 just, it's ridiculous on 4K. It just, it's absolutely phenomenal. So, but it's Terminator 2. And then I grabbed this. This was only 10 bucks on, I thought the price was wrong. I was like, for the 10 bucks for the 4K? I'm like crazy, man. HDR, the Dark Crystal. I love the Dark Crystal. I oddly enough didn't even. I didn't ever had the Blu-ray. I only had the DVD, so I was happy enough to grab the Dark Crystal. I can't wait to actually check this out on 4K. This is going to look crazy. I, at least I think it is. Um, one, I hadn't even gotten around to grabbing the Blu-ray, so I definitely had to grab this. And this had dropped in price, so the 4K was, I think, pretty much the same price. as just the Blu-ray, so. So Dr. Sleep saw us in the theater. Uh, thought it was really, really good. Thought it was really good. Um, it, this does have i don't know why they did this but the director's cut is just on the blu-ray it is kind of strange that they did that but it is what it is and i know the director's cut is quite a bit longer i think it's like a half an hour yeah it's like a half an hour longer that's crazy so i guess i'll have to check that out to see what the differences are but um yeah dr sleep thought it was pretty cool and one i st i didn't even actually have the blu-ray for so i just jumped reach to the 4k and that's joker i'm just kind of waiting for it to drop because i knew this type of catalog title would go down and then it never really did here. For some odd reason, it was always like 20 bucks for Blu-ray. And I'm like, what the fuck? I don't want to pay 20 bucks because I know it's going to drop to 10. So Joker, I even watch this again. It's the third time I've watched Joker. And that looks so ridiculous on 4K. It's just crazy, dude. Like these newer movies, like, oh, it's so silly, man. But um, I love it. I love it. I, I can't wait for a sequel to this, man. I really can't. And then I had to do it, man. Had to do it. Courtesy of my man, Godzilla, Suspiria on 4k um of course this is just an upgrade i have multiple multiple copies of Suspiria, but like everybody probably does in their in their genre collections but yeah again the the, the transfer on this i watched this it looks crazy man it, this is the type of movie that really benefits from 4k because it's super colorful lots of really great cinematography and stuff it just everything just fucking bounces at you it just it's right in your face it's crazy but yeah Suspiria on 4k and of course I had to do it because I have like 30 different copies of the Big Lebowski and this was again 10 bucks on 4k I don't know what the hell I don't know how I found two 4ks for 10 bucks so crazy because 
4 ks aren't that cheap up in Canada, but you just, I guess if you just look in the right spots and hit the timing up, but but yeah, I had to grab it. So, you know, another edition of the Big Lebowski. It's one of my favorite Coen's Brothers movies. Coen's Brothers being one of my favorite uh, directing duos or directors, wherever you want to do it. Um, but uh, and writers, I love the Coen's Brothers so much. So yeah, Big Lebowski. Oh, I just have to keep with that here. I'm going to lose those stacks, I think. And I had to do it, man. I was like, if one movie you got to get on on 4K, man, is it's Jaws. Because, I mean, I remember when the Jaws Blu-ray um, came out, the um, the uh, Digibook or whatever, it, the transfer was just mind-fucking. It was crazy. I can't even imagine it looks like on 4K. It's cool, man. So, yeah, there's a lenticular one. This was dirt cheap. This was like 15 bucks. <laughs> it's crazy. I think, I think when this first came out, people were... Uh, I think they were paying a lot more, and mine does have the booklet, so that's cool. Uh, I I had to do it, man. I had to grab it. I had to grab it. The It Man four movie collection, uh, the original four films, anyways. Of course, like I said, you know, getting into my Donnie Yen kick again. It's a pretty cool set, man. It comes with the booklet, it comes with the fucking awesome poster, and it comes with the four films in the original franchise. I know there's like spin-offs and shit. If anyone's ever seen those, I know one of them that just came out is like apparently super bad. But It Man 1. I still haven't checked these out. I'm probably just going to marathon these one day. Because I l I've only seen the first two It Man. So I have never seen part three before. And I've never seen the fourth one. So um, I th And I noticed the third one's like PG-13. I'm like, that's crazy. What the hell happened there? <laughs> but anyways, so that's a pretty cool set. And honestly, for... I think the set's like, it's very, very um, cheap to get. And Wellgo does some pretty good work and stuff. Like, I, I love the releases, like you said, and they always have good transfers and shit. So um, the price was really good for this type of box set. It's crazy. Uh, last two. We got the Arrow Tremors 4K set. Had to do it. Love Tremors. One of my favorite 90s movies. Just have to do it. And I got to say, man, these thick black cases look amazing. They look amazing. That's super cool, man. Um, but what can you say? Everyone's opened up these Tremors box sets and shit. But I love Tremors. It's a great-ass film. So had to do the 4K on that one. And last up for the 4Ks, we've got a film I, I never ever would have expected. This would be, like, this company's first, well, I guess not first 4K release, but big, big, like, ridiculously over-the-top edition. And, of course, that is the Beastmaster. Man, dude, how is the Beastmaster getting this type of edition? But it's amazing. I love Coscarelli. You know, I love the movie. It's so much fun, but this is just, it's such a nice addition. Um, it's part of their brand new VSU line. So vinegar syndrome now has like a bunch of different lines, which is really cool. But I really do like this. This edition is just so nice. It's just such a nice addition. It even comes with a slip cover in there. Beastmaster. And then you got this and it's like, what the fuck is going on here? It's just ridiculous, man. And I believe that there actually is, <clears throat> you know, there is the um, reversible in there. Three disc set here, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then, of course, the booklet. So, um, yeah, man, Beastmaster getting this. I, you know, honestly, I can't wait. I know, I think they said that they're only going to do like a, like a couple of these a year of these type of editions for, you know, part of this line. I think one every whatever. I think that's the, what they announced. So I, I'm really curious to see what they have in store coming up. If they're going to be given this, uh, you know, Beastmaster, this type of um, love. So, but yeah, amazing, amazing stuff. That is a huge haul. My February haul is not even going to be close to this big because I don't really have a lot of stuff. I really don't even have anything on pre-order. And there's just not a lot of stuff coming out that I really want. But I did spend actually quite a bit this month just on other shit besides all the other hauls I had and stuff. So probably should take it a, a Back a little bit <laughs> you know because there's a lot of fucking money man but anyways that is the haul here i managed to do it in under 70 minutes i think so not bad um but uh yeah that's gonna do it guys leave your comments down below and i will see you at the end of the month i'm gonna do these monthly the only reason why i went this long is because it was december and i just wanted to do all these hauls together and wanted to do my first one at the end of january and stuff but anyways i'll check you guys in the next one in the next video and uh, till then.